Journey, the first season of Underground was so successful with audiences and critics. Uh, what was it like going into the second season? What were your guys' expectations like? Honestly, we had um, a pretty high bar set for ourselves of like, you know, wanting to just push ourselves really hard this season and do what we hadn't done before. You know, um, Underground season one definitely set up such a complex world for us to explore. So it was about, okay, how can we push ourselves to our absolute limits and beyond that in season two? Well, why do you think the show has had such an immediate impact on people and has proven to be so popular? I think it resonates with all of us. Um, you know, in the live tweeting that we do every Wednesday, just to get the real time feedback from people, um, you see that it's really affecting their lives and they feel like they can relate to these characters. And I think that's what any good storytelling does is you see yourself in someone and you can relate to them um, and it hits your core. And that's what we try to achieve in art. You know, sometimes you miss and sometimes you hit. Um, but I, I think Misha and Joe, our creators, have just done such an incredible job at just trying to tell the truth of what, you know, humanity is and, and exploring the shades of gray and, um, you know, our, sh our show is a testament to human will, and that story is always going to be inspiring to people. Yeah, and in the show you see people taking control of their own destinies uh, at the risk of their death. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly you see that this season with Rosalie. Can you talk a bit about some of the changes that Rosalie goes through in this season? <laughs> she goes through a lot of changes. You know, um, it's almost as if she's become a completely different woman from that shy house girl in season one um, who ran 600 miles. You know, at the end of season one, when she seeks out Harriet Tubman, um, she's definitely become a soldier. Um, and that's where we meet her in the beginning of season two, is she's become this protege of Harriet. Har Harriet's been taking her on the runs you know, showing her how to transfer cargo, where the stations are, really showing her the inner workings of the Underground Railroad. And, you know, the mission is to go back and get my mom and my brother from the Macon Plantation, travel 600 miles back, you know, um, a lot like Harriet did for her family. Um, and yet there's a, a something that has complicated matters, and that's that I'm pregnant, you know, um, and it's a secret that I'm keeping from everyone in my life um, because, you know, I'm, I've become super determined to make this mission happen. And, and I'm very aware of the fact that if people know I'm pregnant, they're going to chain me to a bed and make me sit down. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up that, uh, that you're pregnant. I remember in that episode, uh, it's quite a big episode for you because you're, um, you're wounded and you're trying to make your way back um, back home and, and it's revealed at the very end that you're pregnant. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that episode and um, kind of, I mean, because it's so physical for you too and, and so kind of arduous. What was that experience like? Some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life because, you know, we had to, Misha and Joe had to write my pregnancy into the show because of the nature of our show. I can't stand in front of a desk or walk you know, holding a box in front of my belly or something like that. Um, it's a very physical show. And my character's in the woods most of, most of the show. And so having been pregnant in real life, it was probably the most challenging work I've ever had to do for so many reasons, because you do have to push yourself physically, even when you're not pregnant, <laughs> okay? And we started shooting when I was seven months pregnant. Um, and we're working up against a clock to shoot me out. Um, so it was taxing emotionally, physically, and spiritually, but yet there's something happen, There's something that happens when you're pregnant, and this is where I could really relate to Rosalie, is there's a, a real mama bear spirit that happens, and you feel like you can lift a car up, you know? Um, and there's a, there's a superhuman strength that you attain. Um, I don't know, maybe it's the hormones or maybe <laughs> God preparing you for this task of labor. I don't know, but I felt that. And so um, 
initially going into it, there was the the goal of like you know using the stunt woman um, Kelsey, who was amazing, and Tierra Turner, who was our stunt um, coordinator. You know, they the mission was for her to do everything, but. I had done all my stunts in season one, and it was very hard for me to just sit at the monitors and just watch. And I slowly but surely, you know, Anthony Hemingway, our director, and I just kind of figured out what I could do. And it turns out I could do a lot. Um, I was still working out and still felt physically strong, so I did what I could do. Um, but they, you know, they took precautions, and like when I was in the water, it was like a water pool that they had built in the woods, you know? Um, and, and so there were creative ways for us to tell the story and allow me to do what I could do. There's definitely a lot of creative ways that these stories are told. It's a real testament to uh, Misha Green and Joe Pukowski and uh, your directors, such as Anthony Hemingway, that this material that uh, could be very familiar is very excitingly done. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, um, they definitely push all of us to think outside the box when approaching this material. Um, and I think one thing that really helped was having read the slave narratives. You know, um, you, you realize that when you hear what it was like to be an enslaved man or woman from the first person point of view, you realize, wow, they're human beings who fell in love and laughed and had babies and triumphed and, and you know, tried at every single moment to steal little liberties. You know, these little freedoms that they were constantly trying to steal um, is a testament again to what we are as human beings, how strong we are capable of being. And so when you approach it from that point of view of, no, they're real people. No, they're they're always going to try to be free. They're always they're always scratching and crawling towards liberty. Um, you approach it from a different point of view because you don't think of them as victims. You know, you think of them as human beings. And so, while there are very um, very burdensome things that happen to them, and these these things that these obstacles that they face are beyond anything we can imagine, um, you still approach them as if these are living, breathing, flesh and blood people. And that, that isn't an external thing that is happening to them and that's not what defines them. You, you make them have agency of their own life, you know? And that's a very empowering thing um, to do. And so I think overall the show, the way it's shot, the way they incorporate the music um, from now, um, you know, it's bold, it's audacious, it's in your face and urgent, you know, that's a word that they use a lot. Like, you know, Anthony's constantly telling us, pace it up, pace it up, you know, if we try to get too slow or he's like, uh-uh, we, come on, the scene, the scene's gotta pace it up. So I think that whole um, approach to the show just makes our show very different. Um, and it makes you understand this this time period in a different way than I think we've seen before. Well, I was going to ask, does it help you get into the period more as an actor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think we have, again, just such amazing costume designers, Karen Wagner. Um, it always starts for me um, on set with with her, you know, because we've picked out the cloth and it's a it's a real um extension of who your character is is what am i what am i putting on my back in this scene um and it really helped me get into character from that point of view i mean and you know just the visualizations like i keep a lot of um a, a lot of images um that i'll print out and just constantly remind me of the world of Rosalie, um, what was she sleeping in? What kind of sh you know bed was she able to have? Is it just the floor? Is it a, a bed? You know, like all these questions. Um, we have a, an amazing set designer and art department. I mean, I think the crew really just steps it up. And I think it's because 
the content of the show is so rich and we all feel so privileged to be a part of it um, that, you know, everyone tries to bring their A game and it helps me as an actor and all of us actors really get into character in that way. We spoke a little bit about this before, but about Harriet Tubman coming into the show. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a lot of scenes with Aisha Hines as Harriet Tubman. What was that working relationship like between the two of you? I was always such a fan of hers. And on the first day that she came to work, you know, just I, 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 want, I went to her trailer just to welcome her into the underground um, and to kind of, you know, while welcoming her into the fold, into the family, also letting her know, listen, this is about to get rough. And on, I think on her first day of shooting, um, you know, it, we had we rained out. She and I were supposed to do our scene together in episode one, where we're discussing whether or not I will rescue Noah. She feels it's a, a bad decision to make. And I, having known that I'm pregnant and she doesn't know that, I am determined to rescue him and use him to help me get my family. This is a you know a really important scene and it's pouring rain outside. <laughs> so it's pouring so hard, we can't even hear each other. And so they had to shut down shooting and everyone had to go home. And I was just like, Aisha, welcome to the underground. You know, this is, we're in the woods, man. And it's, it's about to be an adventure. But you know, instantly I just felt like she was my sister. And the kind of rapport that we have on screen, um, I think is so great because in person, we feel like we're sisters. And Harriet and Rosalie are sisters, you know? Um, she's like a big sister to me. And, and having taken me under her wing, there's this admiration I have, but now she's also given me this confidence of I can do it now um, because she has taught me so much. Uh, but I love, 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 love that woman. She is a force. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, watching, uh, watching it, I had this weird thing, thing where I thought, she looks just like Harriet Tubman, um, but, you know, we have no idea what she sounds like at all, right? It's, yeah. She really becomes that. Yeah. Uh, you guys work so well together as an ensemble, uh, Aldous Hodge and Amira Van and Alana mm -hmm. Miller, Christopher Maloney, Jessica DeGal. What is that uh, working relationship like between all of you now that you're two seasons into it? We're really a family um, and we're blessed because you can get on a show and have to have these really intimate situations with your colleagues and not get along. But it couldn't be further from the truth with us. I mean, everyone, everyone is, you know, on the weekends hanging out and trying to recharge. And I think we, we all have created such a safe space for everyone. Again, because the material requires us to be pushed beyond our limits, it's so nice to have the safety net where you're having a tough scene or you know, you know if you're in a scene with each other, you can trust each other. Like there's a scene that Aldis and I had to do that aired this past uh, episode nine. And, you know, Noah's really mad at me because he found out that I was keeping the fact that I was pregnant from him. And, and we traveled 600 miles back to Macon under those circumstances and he was not aware. So he's livid and goes off on me. And Larry, our director, um, along with Anthony and Misha, you know, they really kind of pushed us. At first, we, Aldis and I both were like, okay, I mean, he's this mad, you know, like the material. We had that moment where we talked with Misha. We were like, I mean, I get he's mad. I get it wasn't okay, but come on. And yeah. when we really dived into it, we were like, okay, from Rosalie's perspective, I didn't need to, <laughs> you know, I just necessarily agree with him being that mad or not. I just needed to respond to it and listen to it. And so they really p pushed us. But having that relationship with Aldis that I have where I trust him, um, I'm able to get in the ring and battle it out and be that vulnerable. Um, again, because we trust each other, you know? So I know if he's right here in my face um, and we're yelling at each other, it's, I still trust him. 
since we've seen most of the season, it's one more episode left to go. Um, what were some more highlights for you for Rosalie's character uh, or particular scenes that were difficult uh, and you felt like you really pulled it off? <laughs> That's a, I pulled that one off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, oh man, this was, this whole season two, I, I feel so proud of what we all accomplished. And, you know, I had a moment, I haven't seen the finale yet, but I did do ADR for it. And um, just what I saw in it, I literally was doing ADR and as I'm doing it, tears were coming to my face. And I called Anthony afterwards and Misha and just we had like this moment of, wow, I can't believe we did it. All Knowing all the circumstances and how impossible it was um, to shoot, wanted to shoot me out, you know, nine days before I gave birth and, Overall, the season is such an accomplishment for all of us. I think the conditions, we were delayed by Hurricane Matthew a week oh, wow. and had to evacuate to Atlanta. Um, but I think just overall, you know, I'm so proud of the work we did. Episode three was a beast. I mean, it was a never ending episode where, and they, they nicknamed it on set Rosalie's Revenant. Because I'm just, <laughs> I don't even know if I have, I don't even know if I have much dialogue in that episode. I'm in the woods the entire time. They buried me alive, <laughs> you know? And when I watch it, I'm like, I can't believe we did this. Um, and it pushed me, man. It pushed me beyond anything that I ever thought I could do. And and anytime I wanted to complain, I just thought of the Rosalies who actually strapped their babies on their back and ran 600, 700, 1,000 miles barefoot sometimes. And what right did I have to complain? It was a privilege, it was a, an honor, and I felt this, this responsibility to get it right. Um, and in episode 10, you know, when, um, you know, when, I don't know if I can talk about it. If this will, <laughs> if we'll show uh, well, this before next week or not. Um, probably not, right? Uh, it could, you know. I'm certain, okay. I'll well, put a spoiler alert at the. Uh, okay. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, you know, the end of, of episode 10 and the sacrifice that Rosalie makes mm -hmm. um, just for the betterment of, again, her family. It just. You know, it's such a privilege to be used to tell the story, to be used as a vessel to tell the story. And, and you know, I think for me in the industry, one thing, you know, being a, a woman, when you get pregnant, it's, it's like this unspoken thing, you know, of like, okay, well, you're going to sit down and we'll see you in a few years and stuff like that. And I felt so privileged to be able to do what I love and grow this human being that I love, you know, um, and not have to choose. And I think that's Rosalie's struggle in the season is she didn't want to have to choose one over the other, her new family that she's building with Noah. She didn't want to have to choose that over her family that she comes from this legacy. She comes from her mom and her brother. She didn't want to have to choose and why should she have to choose? Why should anyone have to make that choice? Um, and, and so it, it was such a privilege to be able to tell that story. Absolutely. Well, Journey, thank you so much and congratulations on a second season. I look forward to more. Um, and I think you did a good job of making that uh, reveal of episode 10 vague enough to uh, <laughs> spoil it for people. <laughs> thank you. Thanks You're so welcome. much. You're welcome. Okay. Have a good day. All right, bye.